So the paper that I'm going to be talking about uh, now is the paper, in fact, written by Malcolm Tite, entitled The Curriculum in Higher Education Research. As Professor Tite pointed out, when we asked him to do this five-minute presentation, uh, this is clearly an impossible task to do for a review paper. So it's probably best to consider this as a highlight of forthcoming attractions rather than a summary of what Professor Tite deals with in the paper. Everything that I say is taken from his from various parts of the paper. The project uh, is a review of curriculum in higher education. Professor Tite writes, the curriculum has been far less discussed in higher education than it has been in school education. Indeed, analyses of the literature suggest that the curriculum has only rarely become a matter for sustained discussion and research in higher education in the present century. The purpose of this contribution is to explore and synthesize that discussion and research. In order to begin, one must look at what the meaning is of curriculum in this context. Given this growing and diverse literature, it is important and necessary to begin this discussion of the curriculum in higher education research with a recognition of the varying and changing meanings that are given to the term. This quote comes from Bridges in 2000. The competing epistemologies which are struggling to shape the formal undergraduate curriculum of the 21st century are the deconstruction of the subject as reflected in, for example, the modularization of the curriculum, the cross-curricular key skills movement, the learning through experience movement, and the shift of the seat of learning outside of the academy, the profoundly disruptive potential of web-based web learning. These competing epistemologies are still active today and have been joined by others. In his paper, Professor Tite then goes on to uh, describe some of these. The five most popular topics uh, for research uh, were, were found to be curriculum development, institution-wide curriculum change, decolonization, inclusion, and particular foci for the curriculum. These would include employability, gender, internationalization, and sustainability. There are, of course, links and overlaps between these and other topics. And these are, these are all uh, developed in, in detail in the paper, but are simply mentioned here. What I've chosen to do is focus on the connection with Sue Ellen Shea's work for the purpose of the symposium. And again, this is, this is dealt with in more detail in Professor Tite's paper, but just picking up on three of the papers that he mentions. Sue Ellen Shea's research and writing has had the curriculum in higher education at its heart, particularly over the last decade. In the 2011 article, Shea 2011, she uses the work of Bernstein and Mayton, consider, considered uh, the formation of undergraduate history curriculum at the University of Cape Town, picking in particular two separate periods of curriculum formation, treating history as canon and treating history as social science, and revealing the privileging of different kinds of historical educational knowledge, as well as the promotion of different kinds of student identities. In 2011, Shea, still employing Bernstein and Mayton's theorizations, uh, took a wider view discussing uh, curriculum differentiation, stressing the differences between occupationally oriented, professionally oriented, and, generally, and general form formative curricula in higher education. She concluded that there are more and less powerful forms of knowledge, and whether our curricula give students access to these will determine whether they are part of society's important conversations. There are several other papers that I'm skipping over here, but one of in, in one of her last publications, um, co-authored with Cathy Luckett, in Shea's view, the, the way forward needs to be transformative. A transformative approach demands a reframing of curriculum, which involves adjusting the, the scale of the problem, interrogating assumptions informing the norms of the curriculum, questioning current boundaries between mainstream and other students, and reviewing the fitness of the curriculum for a pluralist society. Tite writes, this clearly puts Shea in the vanguard of those internationally seeking a radical redevelopment of the curriculum. Finally, uh, Professor Tite concludes, whilst it would be naive with all the pr pressures on higher education and as varied funders and stakeholders to expect widespread curriculum transformation, we have to maintain a positive outlook, as Shea did. 
in this context, it is also critical that the research interest in higher education curriculum is developed further. In particular, there is a need for more larger scale and comparative research to assess the state of the curriculum and curricular change across disciplines, institutions, and systems.